What's going on guys, Tony Maritato. Welcome to the Knee Replacement Support Group YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the recumbent bike, how to set yourself up, how to get a little bit of an advantage, how to do things that maybe you couldn't do before. I'm gonna show you how to use a couple tips and tricks that we use here in the clinic to use the bike a little more effectively. Probably the first and most important thing is always gonna be the setup. So we wanna make sure that when you're putting your foot on the pedal, the surgical leg, we're gonna pretend in this situation, this is my right leg. My right leg just had a knee replacement. Could have been 24 hours ago, could have been four weeks ago. Whenever you get to use the bike, this is what we wanna think about. If it's my right knee, that's the surgical knee. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the seat so the seat can move wherever I feel like I want to move it. I wanna be back as far as I can, but I still wanna be able to touch the pedal. So I slide the seat forward. I make sure the pedal is down on the side that had the knee replacement. This is gonna be the first put foot I put into the pedal. I get my foot in. If I'm using the straps, I just slide it in like that. Ideally, the pedal placement is gonna be the ball of your foot is gonna be kind of in the center of the pedal. Too often, I see patients slide their foot all the way forward. There are advantages to that sometimes, but that's not the way you ride a bike. We wanna slide that foot back so that I have ankle mobility. I can do my ankle pumps in here and I can feel the pedal right at the ball of the foot. Now, I'll put my other leg in and the high pedal because this one did not have surgery, so it's easy for me to maneuver and control. And then we begin with what we call pedal rocks. I'm sure you guys have seen it, heard it, but for the new ones in the group, basically all it is is I go back three or four inches, I come forward three or four inches. I'm using my non-surgical leg to drive the motion, but as I build confidence, as my brain starts to realize, hey, my right knee, my surgical knee can handle it, I let the other knee do more of the work. Now, as the surgical side is coming back, I try to cue my clients, think of scooping. Like even if I didn't put my non-surgical leg, one of the exercises, one of the tips we use is we say, look, scoop the toe back and then drop the heel as you go forward. Scoop the toe back, drop the heel. If you were on the beach, sunny Florida, you're scooping the sand and then you're pressing it away. That's basically the motion, but what that does is it gets the calf muscle working, the soleus, the gastroc, it gets the hamstring working, and then it allows the joint to start moving in a more natural pattern. Now, once I feel like, okay, it's a little warm, it's a little tingly, I'm loosened up, I've got better range of motion, most clients that I've worked with over the past 20 years, they tend to respond better to a reverse revolution to come over the top for the first time, as opposed to pedaling forward. So what we wanna do is we wanna let that leg come back over the top. This is my surgical side. I control it. Don't let it just flop over. It's, it, that becomes more of a, uh, a surprise than actual pain, but control the revolution. Let it come over the top nice and slow. Start with a reverse revolution. It just tends to be less threatening and then once you've done it a couple of times, then you can try for a forward revolution. If you just absolutely are stuck, you don't have the range of motion, you can't make that turn over the top, a little hack is you can flip the pedal over, put your foot on top so there's no strap, but now you are moving the pedal closer to the heel. And so in a sense, what happens is the surgical leg becomes shorter, the non-surgical is longer, as you're coming over, it requires less knee flexion, and it's usually a little bit easier for you to make those first couple revolutions. Now you're building confidence, you're getting comfortable, your brain and kind of body understand what the motion is. So then what you do is you flip the pedal back, get the ball of foot on the pedal, and now you can pedal in a more normal fashion. From an alignment perspective, I, I can almost guarantee most of my patients who have had a knee replacement had poor ankle, hip, knee alignment prior to surgery. Now when they put the knee in, everything was dead center. So we want to practice proper alignment. And what proper alignment is, is I look at my foot, my foot would be straight. You're gonna have a tendency to wanna turn the heel in and the toe out. 
we want to try and straighten that foot to the best of our ability. As I come over the top, when my foot is in the highest position, my knee should be a little bit wide and I should be able to see the inside of my ankle. If I find myself in this position where my knee is collapsed in and I can see the outside of my ankle, that is not proper alignment. Knee a little bit wide, I see the inside of my ankle, it's a clean line of sight, and I pedal. And, and this motion, essentially what we're doing with this, it's a combination of building confidence, letting your body know what the knee can handle, getting repetitions so that it's just repetitively going through flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, and then building, changing the chemistry. Movement will enhance fluid exchange. It'll get the lymphatic drainage working. It'll reduce the swelling, at least acutely. That's what we're looking for. So guys, I gotta go. My next patient is here. I will update this video with part two later today or this weekend. Thanks for watching.